The program you are about to watch is one of a range of practical gardening videos produced by Periwinkle Productions. You'll find details about how to contact us at the end of this tape. Throughout, our aim is for you to watch the expert and then experience the sheer pleasure of being able to go out into your own garden or greenhouse and do it yourself. From now on, you'll share with others that extra special confidence which these programs provide to create a garden of which you can be truly proud. Lovely, isn't it? Fuchsias, trailing geraniums, lobelia make up this lovely, colourful summer basket. And in the autumn, you can put in crocus, ivy, pansies to give colour right through the year. Fancy having a go? Well, in the next 60 minutes or so, we'll be showing you some of the secrets. Window boxes, hanging baskets and tubs. Provided you follow a few simple rules, it's amazingly easy to get some very good results. This is Allington Nursery near Fair Oak in Hampshire. It's a family business run by Angie and Steve Goodrich. Steve carried on from his father and grandfather before him, and now more than a million plants are grown by Steve for sale each year. He also makes up more than 2,000 hanging baskets for Eastleigh Council. So what better place to come and learn the tricks of the trade? Steve, when it comes to choosing plants for hanging baskets, it's a wide choice these days, isn't it? There's a very wide choice of hanging baskets now. You've got something besides your fuchsias and your geraniums now. Possibly about 38 other varieties now that you can actually use. Yeah, I mean, the verbena here, for one thing. You've got your verbenas, which come in five or six different colours. Your halochrysiums, you've got your yellow, your silver, your variegated, plectranthus. Good old busy lizzies. <laughs> and the good old busy lizzies, yeah. of course, they never change at all. Form a great ball of flowers, aren't That's they? That's right, yes, they do. What would you say the points to look out for, really, when you're choosing plants, hanging baskets, to get good specimens? I suppose, first of all, come to a good nursery like this. <laughs> that, obviously, if you start with good plants, obviously, then you start off on actually on the right foot. Um, plants that aren't too small, they're nice, bushy, um, obviously, with a nice colour green, not yeah. yellow, where they've dried out no. in the past. You don't want these straggly specimens. That's right. That's the last thing you want. Specimens, specimens, you never get a nice result at the end of the day. Well, you've got some good sound ones in there. Yes, you've got your, your petunias, the plectranthus, which some people might not know. As you say, your good old fuchsias. Mm. Your upright geraniums, and of course your ivy geranium. And that'll trail over the side, of course. That will trail down yeah. over the side. Um, we make our baskets in a cross effect. Um, then you can plant your busy lilies, your verbenas, mm. and your other bits and pieces inside, and of course your lobelia, which you mustn't forget, which some people do. Ah, <laughs> yes, yes. Do you like a light blue or a dark blue? I personally like the lighter colours. Yeah. Shows up better at a distance. Shows up better at a distance, and of course it's summer, sunshine, the lighter colours makes you feel better at the time of the year. Marvellous. Well, I'm going to stick up a few plants for Helen. Okay. Now, I've got a couple of busy lilies. A nice white one, a helichrysum with its lovely yellow foliage, another busy lizzie, and a couple of verbena. So don't forget Steve's advice. Look for healthy plants which are bushy and a good green colour. I'm going to show you how to do a traditional hanging basket using either fuchsias, geraniums, lobelia, hanging geraniums, everything, helichrysum. So the first and most important thing to do when you've chosen your basket, and this is a 12-inch wire basket, sit it firmly on a pot, must be nice and firm, very important. Then start with your moss. 
Now, this has to be really damp. If it's not, give it a good watering with your watering can. It certainly won't sit in your basket properly if it's dry. Try and gather moss the day that you're actually going to use it. And don't forget, green side down. Now, once you've got some moss in here, it's a jolly good idea to put an old saucer in because that really keeps everything very firm. And you can leave the saucer in if you want to because it does prevent soil going through the bottom. So tuck it in really tight. This is so important. There we go. If you're going to do it properly, it does actually take quite a long time. You want to cover up all those green wires. This is actually quite a small basket for a traditional, but you can, of course, use something very much larger. And afterwards, when you've got all the moss in, and you think it looks a bit ragged, then you take the scissors and give it a jolly good trim. I always think it's fun to be able to go out and gather your own moss. but it soon goes brown if you don't use it immediately. And that does rather spoil the effect. There we are, we're nearly there. Press it down nice and hard. We're bound to get a bit coming out at the sides. Now you have the moss right to the top. Fine. We'll trim it up in a minute. And there's the saucer. You can either leave it or take it out. In this case, I'm going to leave it. Now, another very important thing is to line the basket again. You'd be surprised how important this is, especially when you have these long, dry, hot summers. But don't forget, here's the polythene, so you get extra drainage. There we are, and if, then that again can be trimmed up afterwards. If you're really worried about watering, then do use a foam liner as well. That's fantastic for holding the water. Now the compost, this is slightly dry. I, I would think it's too dry, so give it a jolly good watering when you've got it in the basket. Now the compost, you don't take it right to the top. Get it in nice and firmly. About two inches, in fact. And of course, when you've watered it, it will go down even further. Now I think it's time to trim. You certainly don't want to see bits of black plastic all over the place. And then, of course, the most exciting bit, choice of plants. I'm going to use a standard geranium for the centre. There we are. And that's how it should look. Lovely red geranium, everybody's favourite. Pop it in there. And then I'm going to have a look and see where I'm going to put my lobelia. Now there's masses to choose from nowadays. You can have the upright lobelia or you can have the um, trailing lobelia. And this is the sapphire, which is a trailing one. Now you'll have to make that into a tight ball to get it through the moss. And hopefully through a slip there in the polythene. There we are. Now if you do this all the way round, it's quite difficult actually. Don't forget, you can stand 
grab a hole. You see, you haven't actually got a slit in the polythene at the particular place that you want to put them in. Make sure, too, these are nice and damp. Because, again, the soil will fall out. These scissors are very useful. There. You can carry on doing that all the way round, and then I would suggest you use some more geranium, the trailing varieties, and you have to put those along the edge at an angle so that they do fall right over. Of course, there are other plants to use besides geranium. These are also very popular. You suck and suck water though in a very hot summer. Certainly grain is more tolerant of the weather. Don't be afraid to take a bit of soil off. There we are. Now one of my favourites is Hilly Crisum. I think that looks gorgeous with the red grain. So maybe a few of these. Again, they are too big to go in the side of the basket. Nice and damp. Don't be afraid to put plants at an angle. You don't want to overfill it, but you certainly want to give a good display. And then you can finish up by actually just finishing off the lobelia. All these plants are at a perfect stage your hanging basket. Now that needs a really, really good watering and then sit it in your greenhouse if you're lucky enough to have one just to get it settled and they can go out as soon as there are no more frost. Okay. Well, Helen, that's looking good. And this is the final job, ah, Harry. Ah, jolly good soak. It does need it. And then I shall hang it in the greenhouse for a week or so yeah. to really get it established. This watering really is the biggest bugbear of baskets, isn't it? Absolutely. Well, I've got something to say over here. Okay. Now we've got all these baskets here, different kinds, but here's one you only need water once a week, would you believe? Well, that's a wonderful idea, isn't it? Especially yeah. if you're working all day. Well, that's right. See, there's this floor here with uh, capillary matting on it and a little tongue underneath that dips down. And in the reservoir at the bottom, you can get four pints of water. So when you're watering it, Harry, how do you know you're not flooding the whole basket? Ah, well, that's a clever thing. Around here, there are three holes, right? And once you get to that level, the water comes out. So once you see the water coming out through the holes, you know it's filled up. What a good idea. And of course you can feed at the same time. Exactly. Great. And of course these hold water very well too, don't they? They're excellent for herbs, aren't mm. they? Oh, very good right. indeed. And you can keep them nicely trimmed too. Well, you, it's got a base for the good old galvanised wire basket. Still my favourite. Yeah. It's probably not the easiest to use. No. When it comes to pushing things through the side, I like this one because it's plastic. So you can I nose. think that's such a simple idea but brilliant. There's half and liners about these days, aren't there? All sorts. Well, this one, coconut. Oh, something new every day. Must retain the water well, I would imagine. I Just like so. a coconut matting. It's rather good, isn't it? It's very it's like, simple to use. Just like a doormat. What and else have you got there? Well, this actually does come with one of the hanging baskets all ready to use. Ah, I've used this for greenhouse shading. I've yeah. never thought of using it for liner. It's nice and easy to chop and cut too. And yeah, the same with great. a foam liner, actually. Oh, yeah. You can cut it. And, of course, you've got these wonderful lips in it to push the plant through. They don't look very pretty to start with, but you know, no, they don't. It up, you don't see them, and of course they do hold the yeah. water well it's again. Than plain black <laughs> and of course this comes complete, and oh, that's a plastic yeah. liner, mm. and then of course you've got the fruit liners, of course again, holding the water well. I like these legs on the bottom, stop it rolling about <laughs> doing it. Lots of good ideas mm. in hanging baskets oh, now. coming on all the time. But whatever sort of basket or liner you use, it must be well supported. You must have a decent sized bracket for a very big basket because they're very weighty. Big sturdy ones like these. That would only take quite a small basket. Well fixed into the wall too. Oh yeah. Oh yes, if you've got a big basket. That's the size. How about that? That's the size you've got to have for a 14 inch basket at least. And I do know somebody who put one of these upside down once. <laughs> For this 
basket, I'm going to use a peat space to compost. It is packed full of nutrients to keep the plant happy throughout the summer, and it does have a water retaining agent in the form of granules. And now the basket. This is plastic, has a built-in saucer, little legs to stabilize it when you're planting up, and as Harry said, springy side for ease of planting. Now the net mesh, which is your liner, is placed in the basket. You'll probably have to make a few folds and try and get it right to start with, and then fill the basket with about a third of this compost. That's just enough to plant the first few plants. Now, actually, I'm going to take a bit of this netting off because it could get in the way of planting. Very easy to cut. And the final trim can be made when the basket is complete. It's so much easier to be able to see what you're doing without just hanging over the edge. Now for planting. The first thing is to make a diagonal cut in the side. Just like that. There we are. And you'll plant. These are cutoneas, and I'm going to do the whole basket with them because this will look really effective and cover all the mesh. Push it in from the outside. And now for the rest of the cutting. I think this will take about eight plants. You do need plenty for effect. Don't make the holes too big because you don't want your compost slipping through. A good strong plant, plenty of root. And that's going to get away very quickly. There we are. You can always make them bigger, but you cannot do anything about it if you cut them too large. Maybe a little bit fiddly to start with because this has got a lot of root on it. Being a perennial, it's slightly more difficult than putting little annuals in. There we are. There's the second one in. So that's the first layer of planting finished and the roots are sitting very comfortably on that soil. Now, for the next layer, you do exactly the same, a couple of really good handfuls of compost. Press it down lightly so those roots below are nice and firm. And now for the second layer, do place your plants in between the eight that are below there, so therefore you would cut just about there. Now obviously, we're going to need more plants because the basket is a lot wider. Plenty of lovely root on it. And push it through just as before. Actually, the further up the basket you go, the easier it all becomes. There we are. Up again, laying the roots that are nicely formed on top of the compost. And the last plant going in. Now it may look as though there are masses of plants, maybe too many, but not at all. To get the all-round effect in a basket like this, which is large, you must use plenty. And now for the final trim. Your mesh liner. Press it right back to the curve of the basket. Be careful not to cut the leaves. There we are. And of course, as always, a really good watering before you hang it up. Of course, there are many things you can use in a hanging basket nowadays, and one of my particular favourites are strawberries. And you must get them planted really early, February or March at the latest. They must make lots of growth. And then you get flowers, and you get fruit, 
Well, the fruit on this one will be ready, oh, easily in May. And I've also put lots of ivies in it. So when the strawberries are over, I take those out, I leave the ivies in, and then I put my autumn and winter plants in, such as pansies, polyanthus, phoebes, heathers, and you really don't have to disturb the basket at all. Winter flowering pansies planted in a hanging basket in the autumn will flower throughout the winter. It'll give a splash of colour outside your kitchen window to brighten the dullest days. Now maybe you've already grown your pansies from seed, but if you haven't, don't worry, there are plenty about. And you don't necessarily have to buy them with flowers on. Then we've got a 14-inch basket here, and you'll see it's standing on a good wide plastic pot. Now, there's a reason for that, because if you take it away and try and do it there, it rocks all over the place. So either a bucket or a good stout pot like that. And then it's lined with good damp moss, and in the middle I put a piece of black plastic, because there's nothing worse later on than you go to water your hanging basket, and it runs straight through the middle, and it's a sheer waste of time. And then, on top of that, some good compost. Good multi-purpose compost. We'll be filling this up later as it goes along. But there's enough there to start with. Then in can go the plants. One of my favourite jobs, you see, is to start to see things taking shape. One there. Another one worth putting about there, I think. Because these are grow, don't forget that. And, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, another one in here. All right. They go on all the way around the pot. Well, that's all the plants in. And now it's time for another layer of moss. It has to be put around really tight around the edge. And it's worth taking your time with this, you know. Don't rush it. Firm down the moss bar. And then it's time for another good portion of this fine multi-purpose compost. Lovely stuff, is, isn't it? You could eat it almost. Then another layer of plants. And if any of them, by the way, have got their roots a bit, you know, tied together, then do take a bit of time just teasing them out a little bit. So when they're put down, they make a much better contact with the compost. One in there. Another nice one. Tease out his roots a bit. Compost off the top there. A little bit of a neck to come through, don't we, after all? There we are. Through you go. Turn that down well into the compost. And you notice I'm fitting the top layer so they're in between the ones underneath. Now it's coming on very well now, just a few more bits to ease in around the top. And these want to be nicely rounded, and it does help to keep the water in. Another one there. Last bit in there. And clean these off with a pair of scissors afterwards. There we are. Now it's time for a bit more compost. I don't want to overdo the compost because there are plants going in here and they take up a bit more room as well, remember? And now we plant up the top layer. Rest it on the rim, but do make sure the roots come down into the compost. Then your next one. Same applies. It's really coming together well now, isn't it? One in 
about there. And so we go on. Well, once the top rim's done, a little bit of compost needed in there. I don't want to be too far up, an inch below the edge, and then we can start putting the top ones in. Resting it on the surface. Yeah, looking really good, this is. A little bit more compost has to go around, fill up the gaps. And that's about it. Now I can't stress too much the importance of leaving that gap at the top so that when you water it doesn't run all over the side. We'll be doing that watering later on. But first of all, of course, this is a hanging basket. So you've got to hang it up. And they're quite a weight, these things. I didn't do it with a chain on because they always get in the way. So you hook it on there. You all might have to change this a bit later on. And on there. And the third one over here somewhere. Very, very good. Now, Quite a weight this is. Good strong bracket. The wasp up there. Oh, right, he's gone. Of course, the last thing is the watering. And they want to do this in a couple of goes. Have a go, then let it soak down a bit, and then have another one. And the other thing is regular deadheading as the season goes on. And that'll encourage more flowers. Once the thing starts setting seed, there won't be so many flowers. Now this is another rather smaller basket, it's the same idea, pansy, and it's a plastic basket, that's easy to do in a way. Hanging here at the moment because there's a hook, but it'll go outside and stay there right through the winter. <laughs> When it comes to choosing compost, there's bags of choice, isn't there, for this plant? Oh, exactly, Harry. Please don't use garden soil, though, because oh, no. hanging baskets hate garden soil. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Not only is it heavy, but, you know, it's, um, as you say, it's full of disease and all sorts of That's right. You've got to have a lighter compost altogether. Oh, yes. And there's a lot of it made now, especially for the job. I mean, you've got your multi-purpose kind, but this hanging basket compost, that intrigues me. It's, it's not been out long, you know. No, it's just good. Great stuff, and it's got these moisture retaining granules in it. Yes, I think most of them have now, mm. which is an excellent idea with the hot summers we get. Oh, <laughs> and there's one here with bark in it, bits of bark. I think this is lovely because yeah. it's so open and... A fugus? Well, not quite. It's starting a fertiliser which ah, you mix in with it. I see. Again, sort of slow-release stuff, isn't it? That's it, mm. yes. But in the top of the bag, so uh, don't open it at the bottom. Or you'll never find it. <laughs> and of course you've got this as well, which is excellent. What's that, tea bags? Not quite, but they are soluble and you pop them under your plant when you plant a hanging basket or whatever. And the goodness comes through all the perforations. Again, slow release. Yeah. But of course, a lot of this will not last all the summer. Our summers are long now, you know, yeah. and they need extra feeding. Oh, yeah. At least once a week mm. when you're watering. See, we've got an ericaceous compost here, and to go with it, as you say, the feeding, ericaceous seed. That's very good because it's got iron in it, ah. which is just what the rhododendrons and the gems yeah. all need. And the other run of the mill stuff, a good high process run here. That will make glorious flowers, yeah. give good colour. That's it, either liquid like this or... Make your hanging basket really strong. It's powder? Yes. Mix it up, teaspoon, full to a gallon, and Most you're away. Most important. That's the way to look after hanging basket flowers. That's the way to do it. Here's a basket anyone would be proud of. With a little tender, loving care every day, it'll stay in tip-top condition for months. 
There's no magic formula. Feed and water regularly and remove all the dead flowers and leaves as soon as they pass their prime. And this colourful display will continue to bloom all through the growing season. One of the nicest things you can grow in hanging baskets or pots are herbs. This one has a rosemary, looks very good because of the height, a fever few, and nasturtiums, which you use for flowers for garnishing your salads, and finally a very pretty silver thyme, which is in flower. I always like to have herb baskets hanging outside of the kitchen door or window or somewhere close anywhere where I can just grab a bit when I want it. So this is an ideal basket because of these pockets here and you can plant it from the inside which is the correct way. So a few ideas. First, your hanging basket compost in the bottom and then I would have something that spreads nicely. A thyme maybe. And this is a silver thyme. And this will come out quite undamaged through the pocket. And that will spread nicely. And don't forget, when you're doing herbs, you're constantly chopping at them, so that keeps them nice and compact. Now, I'm rather like margarine, so golden margarine. I think this basket's going to be mainly golden anyway. And again, you do exactly the same thing. There you are. Spread the roots out so they've all got a jolly good chance and then see the few also very pretty good for headaches i believe so maybe worth having one in the basket and now i think we've got one more pocket and i would go for savory you can have a winter savory and a summer savory and this is the winter variety Summer savoury is so easy to raise some seed. There we are. Spread the roots out. And now all the pockets are filled, so you go almost to the top, within about an inch and a half with your compost. And I think we ought to have some change. There we are and parsley, without a doubt. And that's better sitting on the, gosh, that's a well-rooted parsley. And we must have parsley. This is really well-rooted, just how it should be. Just tease some of those roots because they're really jammed in there. And that will go in there. And if I use a peppermint, that doesn't become so invasive as the ordinary mint. And it does keep the flies away, or so they say. And one of my very favourites, coriander. Really well rooted. You can buy plants like that. It really gives them a good start in life. I say, just tease out the roots a bit. There. Make sure they're all well and truly firmed in. A little bit more compost. smells delicious already. You can smell the coriander. But if you really want a cheap basket which will give you a glorious display all through the year, nasturtiums. They're wonderful. Also sweet peas. And now, of course, the final watering for our herb basket. A really good watering. And then that will hang straight outside the kitchen door. And it doesn't mind lots of sun. It won't worry quite so much about getting dry.
Well, hanging baskets are one way of brightening up the scene outside, but another way is to use window boxes, and they're becoming very popular these days. You may be lucky enough to have a stock-sized one. And you know, there is a range in terracotta, plastic, stone. If you have one of those, you really do need strong fixings. And check your window frame, make sure that'll take the strengthening as well. Or, if you like, you can make your own from good old tree wood. If you're crafty, you can make a jolly good window box from a standard plank like this. It's about 2.7 metres long, about 9 feet. Now you mark out the front, the back, the base of it, the two ends, and with any luck you find you've got a bit left over down here. Don't throw it away, you'll need that for the feet and any brackets and so on, so it's jolly useful. Then, once you've cut it up, you put the bits together. But before you do that, do give it a coat of a jolly good wood preservative. We've used a wood stain one here, or we could use a clear one and paint it. But whatever you use, do make sure it will not harm the plants when it's dry. Now, we've made it this size just to take the standard 24-inch plastic insert, because there's nothing worse than having to take all the plants out and replant in one window box, and it can be backbreaking old work. But with this, once one's done, as you'll see, we can change it later on. Now, the front here goes on, but you see it leaves a gap. Now, that's not my bad measurement. That's done for purpose. You can make holes in the bottom, of course, but that's a boring old business. I like this slot here because it lets the rain run over any water that comes out. comes out so it doesn't go down the wall, goes over the edge of the windowsill if you've got one. So, put the front on. Now, if you've got a sloping windowsill, it's no bad idea to have a couple of wedges like this. Then you can put them on the windowsill, and that'll make up the slope so it stays good and level. If you haven't got a windowsill, what do you do then? Well, you fix brackets to the wall, of course. You can use shelf brackets like this. If you do, they do really need to be very firmly fixed. And I think that's a little more decorative, especially if you haven't got a windowsill or much sticking out. One, they're all right, but these wrought iron ones are better. Because there's quite a bit of clearance at the back. But whatever sort of bracket you use, or whether you just rest it on the windowsill, you must fix the window box firmly to the wall. Because if it falls down and falls on somebody's head, you've had it. So, good stout screw eyes. Another one in the window frame, and some good tough wire between them, and make sure it's really well fixed. Because after all, if you use these inserts, you don't need to be taking them backwards and forwards very much, do you? It stays put. That looks splendid, Harry. Oh, it'll look even better in a minute. My God, is he busy there? Yeah. Oh, lovely. All done in yellow. Yeah. I thought that's most effective. I do like shelf colours in window Green boxes. Green and gold, and yeah. Hanging baskets. You've got a variety here too, haven't you? And I started with a basket. Oh, it's a trail over the side. Most attractive. Yeah. Then a Swedish ivy oh. that spreads and also goes over. Mm. And the ordinary ivy. Oh, good old English ivy. A pot of that is really good value because oh. you get so many little plants yeah, yeah. for a pound or two. And then a creeping jenny, something you don't really expect to see in a window box. No, but it's creeping over the side now. Nice very thing. effective. Yeah. And the little bedding begonia again with the white flowers. That's very nice. Mm. And ending up with the calcularia. Oh, They're becoming very popular. Great balloon-shaped flowers later on. Be marvellous. That's right. It's going to be glorious. Of course, if you're not into DIY, how about the Rolls-Royce of the window box, made in hardwood by Trevis Smith, an old family firm up in the black country. Again, made to take these inserts, you see, so you've got a constant change of flowers as the seasons go by. And drainage this time, because it's got an insert, just through slats in the bottom. And what's more, you get good sturdy brackets you can put together. They'll hold anything, certainly hold this. If you'd like a permanent display in your window box, then buy pots like this and just plunge them. Now, you can put some gravel in the bottom or a bit of rough compost, but don't forget the drainage holes, even though they're in pots, and place them in. And then if you want to remove them, if they die or they get too big, it's so much more simple. This is Elwood's gold, but the masses of cupressus to choose from, and Hebe, this actually is a dwarf one. And then the ever-useful ivies, They'll last all through the winter as well. 
and Heather's. There are many to choose from, but this is one of my favourites. That's Jack Brummage. Looks good all the year round, but particularly in the winter. Many people are quite happy to garden on their patios or maybe a balcony or just a patch outside the back door. But what sort of pot would you recommend, Steve, for this purpose? Well, you have this new terracotta pot now, which is becoming very popular. The only disadvantage is a little bit on the heavy side. Phosphorus? Mm, to a certain extent. Um, it's not an ideal pot to leave out all winter if you've got a sort of slightly protected area conservatory, best to bring it in for the winter. But this certainly is <coughs> prosperous. <laughs> this is the new <laughs> one now that's obviously it's just arrived onto the market. Um, very lightweight, a little bit more expensive, but very, very good value for money. Not forgetting, of course, holes to be drilled into the bottom, and of course the upturned crops, two to three inches deep in both of them. Yes, even though it looks like clay, it doesn't act like clay, does it? No, it doesn't. And you'd soon get to plant waterlogged. But there's a massive range of wall pots from even tinier space. They're, they're very attractive, aren't they? You can make your walls look very, very nice. Your fuchsia, dry geranium, sebelias, etc. A wall can look made to be look very, very attractive. Yes, I think they're wonderful. And of course, when you go to the top of the range, you've got the strawberry pot there, but it doesn't necessarily have to have strawberries growing in it. It can look very, very effective with fuchsia, geraniums, busy lizzies once again. As you say, a bit more expensive, but looks very, very nice. It's very classy. But what's your most popular selling container? The one we sell mostly is the modern day white plastic, or whatever you'd like to call it. Once again, of course, must be drilled with holes. Um, and once again, as you say, though, it's cheap and it's very effective. But do choose trailing plants to break up that hard white. Yes, yes. Once you've lost the whiteness, it can look very, very effective. Or for people with a very limited budget, you've got the new compressed peat. Well, that's very good because not only could you grow flowers in that, but you could have a mini vegetable garden. <laughs> yes, as you say, you know, lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, marrows. Few radish, spring onions. <laughs> the whatever list is you endless, like to put. isn't it? <laughs> well, as you say, it, it's cheap, it's economical in everyone's pocket range. Pansies look great in containers too. Give you colour right through the winter. Now, you might think that's a terracotta one there, but it isn't. Uh, it is very light, made of plastic, a lot cheaper. Maybe not last as long, but well worth it. How about this? Now you might look at that and think that's made of cast iron and be worth a pound or two, but they're really quite cheap. And again, you can see, it's quite light plastic. Just imagine these primulas in here, and some miniature narcissi, but really great in the spring, marvellous. Pottery specializes in the production of top quality terracotta pots by traditional methods. The pots are formed by throwing or hand molding, decorated, settled, turned and dried prior to firing in the kilns. The largest pots take up to six weeks to come through the whole process. These handmade pots in a variety of designs mellow beautifully with age and carry a guarantee against frost damage. Here are some imaginative and unusual plant combinations in a selection of Witchford pots.
only problem with a nursery like this one is that you're spoilt for choice. Ah, oh, there's a nice one. Strong and healthy, but not too big. Just the job. No, uh, Helen, how's that? Oh, I do love Japanese azaleas, and that's a beautiful oh, colour. Yeah. And it's got a match beautifully with the pot. Yeah. There. Which one? Oh, I don't know. They're so subtle, aren't they, oh, in they design? Yes. Very subtle. You don't get one of those for five. No, they're top of the range, oh. but they're quite beautiful, aren't they? Gorgeous, yeah. But I guess you'd have to take them in during the winter. Oh, I take them in every night. <laughs> they must be expensive then. <laughs> but, you know, they don't have to be expensive, do they? Just have their pot. Oh, no, certainly not. You've got this here. Oh, if you want a big display, yeah. It looks pretty authentic, too, doesn't yes, it? And you've got a lot of stuff in there. Oh, my word. Almost have a bath in it. And then again, it's plastic, I know. But it doesn't look it. That's the great thing. No, it's the choice of plant that's so important. There's another? Yeah, this is made by the same people who made those lovely window boxes, you know. Yes, it's very attractive. Oh, hardwood. What I like about it is this water indicator here. You see a little filler. Lift the lid, pour the water down. Tell when it's full. So and it comes complete with a supply of oil to keep the teeth in good condition. This sort of thing will never spoil and last you for years. That's it. But of course. <laughs> <laughs> this will last you for years. And great for putting geraniums in and things like that. Oh yes, all sorts of cascading yeah. plants. I think they're most attractive. Yeah, and you also fill it with water, you know. And use it for <laughs> Dual purpose. That's it. <laughs> off that will happily stand outside for the whole of the winter. Now this is a plastic pot and do make sure it is well cropped because they do waterlog very easily. But they certainly won't crack if you get a hard winter. So the last of the ivies, pretty trailing ivy and a dwarf conifer and multi-purpose compost and you won't need to seed it at all till at least next spring. And if you do want a splash of colour, a few crocus bulbs, muscari, do keep them dwarf though. And finally, I'm going to plant up one of my favourites, this wooden tub. Now, the most important thing about planting up a tub for the winter is to make sure it has really good drainage. So, first of all, some crops. And place this one over the main drainage hole concavely, and then finish filling it with all the other bits of crop and you can never put too much crop in because the plants I'm going to put in are all acid loving and love really good drainage. There are always plenty of broken pots around most people's gardens. There we are and that's ready for planting. Now you must use an ericaceous compost. This is so important because I'm going to use a miniature rhododendron and I'm going to put some heathers around it too and of course you can use camellias and there are many, many other things that you can't grow in lots of gardens so there we are, this is the miniature rhododendron going in I've got to get the height right there's a little more compost Make sure your plant is damp before you put it in. Give it a good soaking. It's amazing how much compost these plants really need. And again, if you want a really good splash of colour in the spring, there's so many bulbs that you can choose. But don't forget, do keep them dwarfed. You don't want to hide this lovely plant. Right. That's the rhododendron sitting quite happily. There's a massive choice of heathers in the garden centres nowadays. And so I'm just going to put a pretty mixture in. Some will flower in the winter, some in the spring. Because these 
rhododendrons do have quite a long life of bloom. Lovely foliage here to contrast. I think five will be ideal. I hate to see tubs with very little in, and there's plenty of compost to keep them going. Now fill up, and this is ready to sit on your patio for a bright splash of colour in the winter. The final level of the compost should be about an inch to an inch and a half below the rim, and this applies to any container so that it makes it easy for watering and feeding. And as with all pots, hanging baskets, any time it's a container, they do need a thorough but gentle watering so you don't disturb the soil too much. And to help you, we've compiled a list of all the plants we've used in our hanging baskets, pots and containers, plus many, many more suggestions. And you will find that inside the video, please. Bye for now. From early September, you know, the shops, the stores, garden centres and nurseries are full of a wonderfully appetising collection of bulbs. You can put them in the ground, of course, and a lot of us do. But what about other containers? clay containers like this, window boxes, or how about a hanging basket? Now this is one we made up earlier. It's got three primroses in at the moment, some ivy to go over the side, and it's nicely packed with moss with the compost in the middle. And we're going to put some daffodil bulbs in first of all. Pressing them down nicely. The tips will just be on or below the surface and now for a bit of compost not a lot just enough to get the tip just about covered should do very nicely i might take it off the leaves as we go along and in the top there i'm going to put some of these crocuses imagine how they'll look when they come up later on really brilliant press them in there got to remember with these, of course, all these poles point side upwards, otherwise they do take just that little bit longer. There's the last of them around there, pointed side up again. That'll look really a treat when they come up. There's a little more compost on the top. off the leaves of course nicely even when that's had a watering that'll be ready now how about a container like this nice terracotta container guaranteed against frost damage and these are forget-me-nots here and we're going to put some of these tulips in nice bulbs these are again reasonably deep The last three in. And all they need here, a nice bit of watering, and they'll be away. And don't forget all those lovely spring flowering plants you can get as well, like the polyanthus, the aubrecia, the bellis, in that pink and white shade. And in the front now, a lovely little viola. Quite hardy. That's Blue Princess, that one. Looks a real picture, doesn't it? So don't use your baskets and containers just in the summertime only. Use them in the spring and winter as well. There are many more plants than the ones I've shown you here. So have a go and really get some colour right through the year. Well, that's it. Hope you've enjoyed it as much as we've enjoyed showing you. Have fun. Bye-bye. <laughs>